Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode in the Learning Python series. In this episode we're going to be continuing on with strings and we're going to be looking at some useful functions for working with strings and we're going to be working with some of the string methods and you'll learn the difference between a function and a method throughout this episode. So let's jump straight in, let's get into the examples. So some useful functions for working with strings. So you guys have seen us use some functions. We've used the print function, for example, where we call print, followed by a set of parentheses, and then we pass it values. So pass it a value, and if we run this file, so I've got a new file here called string2.py. We run that, we get a result here out in our terminal. So we're passing values into our function, and then it's doing something with those values but it doesn't necessarily return anything. Whereas these functions here are gonna return us a value. So let's see that in action. So the first function we're gonna cover is the type function. And what the type function does is it takes a value just like print, but it also returns a value. And the value it returns is the data type of whatever argument we provide it. So let's do an example. Let's create a new variable called my string and we'll give it the value of defo a string because it's definitely a string. We've created it. Let's create a new variable here called uh, result. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign it the value of type and then to the type function, I'm going to pass in my string. So like I said, Functions don't always return a value, like the print function. We just give it something and then it goes ahead and does something. Whereas some functions do return values and we'll learn more about functions when we get to that section in this series. In this case, the type function, it takes an argument and it returns whatever data type of the argument that we provide it. And we're gonna store that uh, result in this variable here called result. So let's go ahead and print result. Let's see the, how this looks. And we get class string. Don't worry too much why it says class here. We'll learn that shortly. But you can see we've got str. And str is just the Python abbreviation for a string. So if we were to change this to an integer, which is a whole number, let's go ahead and save, run this code again we get class int. And again, int is just the abbreviation in Python of an integer. 22.3, we know this value is a float. It's a float data type. We run this again, we get class of float. So that's how the type function works. So let's go ahead and just change this back to a string. And I'm gonna go ahead and just comment out that print. So let's move on to the is instance function. So kind of works in a similar way to type, but with different functionality. And what the is instance function does is it will allow us to check if a value or an object or a variable is of a type string, integer, float, etc. So let's go ahead and just jump into an example. So we'll use this my string variable and let's create a new variable here called result again and we're just going to overwrite this variable and we'll use the is instance function so is instance takes two arguments inside the parentheses it takes the object that we want to check and then it takes the data type that we want to check against so in our case i'm going to use the str data type and again that's just short for string so it's almost like we're asking the question, is my string an instance of a string? And it's gonna return either true or false, which again is another data type in Python called a Boolean, which we are gonna cover shortly. But a Boolean, it can kind of be described as Python's way of saying yes or no, true or false, right or wrong, full or empty, um, yes or no, it's, we'll cover Boolean shortly and it will make more sense. But let's go ahead and print the result. 
let's clear out and we'll go ahead and run this and you can see we get true because my string is the data type string however if we were to change this to int what do you guys think we're going to get ready thought about it we get false because we know that my string is not the integer data type it is a string data type and again this works the exact same way with float so we would pass that float rerun the code again we get false so we use is instance um, and it's not just for checking strings integers and floats it can check all sorts of different data types in Python which we'll be covering throughout this series so is instance is a great built-in function for when you've got when you're working with data um, and you don't necessarily know what the value is you don't know what data type you're working with you know not every value that you create in Python you'll be creating yourself you may have data coming in from a form you may have data coming in from users from different sources um, so we use is instance to check the data type and it's going to return a boolean so the next function we're going to cover is the str function and what the str function does is it just converts things into a string so let's go ahead and create a new variable here uh, let's no let's create a variable called we'll just call it age age 20 i wish i was 20 so let's go ahead and use the string function to convert age into a string and then we'll assign it to a new value so we'll do string string age equals now let's use a string function so str takes one argument and the argument it takes is whatever value you want to convert into a string and then it's going to return the value and in this case we're assigning it to a new variable called string age and if we were to print our string age let's have a look we get 20 but that's not very helpful for us because if we just printed age skipping out the whole string function it looks exactly the same so why don't we use the is instance function here and rather than print age what I'm going to do is actually pass the is instance function into the print function so we'll call is instance open close another set of parentheses inside of the print function parentheses and the first argument we need to give to is instance is the object that we want to check so in our case it's string age and then a comma followed by the data type that we want to check against so we'll give it a string so what do you guys think this is going to print let's clear out the terminal and we get true and if you've never seen um, we haven't passed any functions into other functions before in this series and the way Python works is it's going to first evaluate the result of this function before it executes the print function so that's why this is printing true however if we change that to an int we know that string age is not an integer so this will print false because again it's evaluating that value first passing that value to the print function and then calling the print function so that's how we use the string function again just to recap it takes a argument or a value or a variable anything any kind of object it then converts that into a string and returns it and in our case we're just assigning this string age the value of whatever string returns and again this doesn't just have to be um, you know let's say you have a load of mixed values coming in you have floats coming in you have strings coming in you have integers coming in you know we could change this to a string and let's run this again we get false but if we change this to str run it again we get true so even if the value that we're passing it is already a string it doesn't matter it's going to just going to see that it's already a string so it's not going to do anything it's just going to return the uh, string value which we're then storing in here and for example again if this was a float run that again it's just doing the exact same thing converting age 
into a string and then we're assigning that value to a new variable called string age. So that's how we use the string function. So that's the three useful functions that I wanted to cover. Let's move on to methods. So methods are a little bit like functions in that they can take arguments or not take arguments and they will return some kind of value. But the difference is, you know, a function looks more like this on its own, or it might look like, you know, result equals string of, you know, something. We can just pass that an integer, for example. Whereas methods are slightly different. So let's, let's jump into an example, because I think it's much easier to explain. So there's absolutely loads of methods that you can call on strings in Python. We're not going to cover them all. We're just going to cover a handful of the useful ones. So let's create a new variable. I'm just going to call it awesome and we'll give it a value of awesome. Just a simple old string. So we can use methods to transform a string. So let's do so. Let's do upper awesome equals awesome. So if I did this, upper awesome would just be whatever value we've got assigned to awesome. It would just be this. However, if we call a method, and we call a method by dot, and then the name of the method. So one method is upper, followed by a set of parentheses. So what this is going to do is it's going to look at whatever the value is of what we're calling the method on. In our case, it's this variable, which has the value of awesome. And then the upper method returns a copy um, just with some kind of transformation applied. So can you guys guess what the upper method does? Well, let's go ahead and print it. So let's go ahead and print upper awesome and see how it looks. It's clear. We get an uppercase version of our awesome string. So it's applying a transformation. It's doing something different or it's, it's doing something with the value that we call it on and then it's returning that value. So in this case, dot upper followed by a set of parentheses is going to make all of the characters uppercase on whatever we call it on. And that's the kind of... Uh, the way of differentiating between a function and a method. We use this dot notation followed by the method and then it's going to do something and then return a result. So we've got a few methods that we're going to cover and it might take a bit longer and this video is already getting a bit long um, if we were to do them all here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this file and if you guys have never seen it before, I'm going to introduce you to the Python interpreter or the interactive Python interpreter. And we get to it by Python and enter. And what it does, it launches us into a interactive um, kind of conversation with Python where we can write commands and Python will instantly look at whatever we give it it will evaluate it and it will return us a value immediately. So we can do everything that we can do in a Python file in the Python interpreter, but rather than write everything out line by line and then run our code, the interpreter works differently. It looks at whatever we give it and then it evaluates it immediately as soon as we hit return and then it will give us a value. So for example, we just called the upper method on a string. So let's do the same thing here, but in the Python interpreter. So let's create a string called awesome. Helps if I spell it right. Dot upper. Hit enter. And you can see here it returns us this awesome string, all uppercase. So we've called the method on a string. But you'll notice it's a little bit different. We haven't assigned this to any variable or anything. And you don't have to do that in the Python interpreter. That's where it gets a little bit different. So again, it just evaluates whatever command we give it. 
So in this case, we're just saying, take this string and make it uppercase by calling the dot upper method. So let's go a through a few more of these methods. So in the Python interpreter, you can use the up and down arrow keys to kind of tab through the different commands that you've uh, that you've been entering. So let's look at a different method. Let's use the capitalize method. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna make the first letter um, capitalized. And if we were to have two words in here, awesome uh, Python, it only touches the first letter. So that's what capitalize does. Let's take a look at some more. So I'm just gonna quickly use the up arrows to tab through these. So we'll change this from capitalize to encode. And you'll see here, we get awesome back, but we get this B at the front. Um, what? Whenever you see a B before a string in Python, it means that it is bytes. So strings in Python are um, UTF-8 or Unicode. And um, we use the dot encode method to return a string of bytes. I'm not gonna go too much into the strings in Python now because even myself, I'm not an expert on the different types of encoding in Python. But just know that when you need to create a string of bytes, you use dot encode. So some more useful ones. So let's come back up to awesome. And I want to call the starts with method. And then this actually takes an argument. So I'm going to give it a string just with the letter A. Hit return and you can see we get true because awesome starts with an A. However, if we were to change this to AC, we get false. But it doesn't have to just be the first letter. We could do AWE, and that's true because awesome does, in fact, start with AWE. Now, the starts with is a really useful uh, method to call on strings, and uh, I use it quite often in uh, my own work or my own code for when you need to know when something starts with a certain character or certain group of characters. Uh, we could also call the ends with method. And if I do an E, we get true because awesome ends with an E. However, if we change this to a G, again, we get false. And we can do the same thing with starts with. So, you know, we could put um, OME and it's going to return true because awesome ends with an OME. Uh, let's move on to something different. And this one doesn't take an argument, is l num. And we get true because awesome is uh, alphanumeric. And what I mean by alphanumeric, if we were to go ahead and replace the S with a dollar sign, we get false because a dollar sign is not an alphanumeric character. You know, alphanumeric characters are uh, letters, numbers, etc and non-alphanumeric characters are things like like this. Uh, punctuation, dollar signs, percent, up carrots, stars, braces, these are non-alphanumeric characters. Is numeric. So let's do another string, one, two, three, dot is numeric will return if all of the characters of the string are numeric. So if we were to replace this with ABC, or well, we got one ABC there, and that's false, because not all of the characters are numeric. So let's look at another one which will return something new. So we could do, uh, for example, awesome, all uppercase, dot lower, parentheses, and that will return a lowercase version of the string. And just to remind you guys that if you were, for example, to be writing this in a Python file, you may do something like uh, lower, 
lower awesome equals a string dot lower. And then we can look at that by just typing in the name of the variable and it's gonna return the result. So that's how you kind of create and assign values to variables. Let's quickly cover some more. So we know we've here now in the Python interpreter, we've got this lower awesome variable. So why don't we call something on this? So lower awesome dot is lower. And there we get true because all of the characters of our lower awesome variable are all lowercase. However, if we were to do something like hello all uppercase dot is lower, we get false because they're not lowercase. And even if we were to only have one uppercase letter in there and the rest of them are lower, we still get false because they're, um, they're not all lowercase characters in the string. So this will only return true if all of the characters of the string are lowercase. And again, the same thing applies to uppercase characters. So we've got another method here. Hello dot is upper. Can you guys guess what this will do? We get true because all of the characters are uppercase. So string is upper true. However, if we put a lowercase, we get false because they're not all uppercase. So a very, very useful um, method, a useful string method is join. And I think actually what I want to do is jump back into our Python file to show you guys this in action. So let's make some room, jump back into string two. Let's go ahead and comment this out. So first thing we need to do actually is quit the Python interpreter. So you do that with quit followed by a set of parentheses and that will quit, quit the uh, Python interpreter. Let's go ahead and clear our terminal. So I wanted to show you the dot, uh, no, not lower, dot join. Join is extremely useful and you'll see it used all the time in Python and it's really cool. So I know we haven't covered any of the data containers in Python yet, like lists, tuples, or sets. But what join allows us to do is join up a, you know, a collection of strings. And we use join. Let's just create a list. I'm going to just call it x for now. Uh, foo, bar, and baz. So we got a list. I want to use the join method to join these up all as one string separated by commas. And the way we do this, it might look a little bit weird at first. So let's create a new variable called joined. And what I'm gonna do is create a new string here, just with a comma and a space. So this is our string, and we're gonna call the join method. And then to join, we're gonna pass the, uh, the container that we want, you know, the container holding our data that we want to join together. So let's go ahead and throw in X and we'll print joined. Let's see how this looks. So Python string two dot pi. And you can see it's joined up our container here, our list is joined up all of the elements of our list with a comma followed by a space. So we might wanna change this to something like a plus. Let's go ahead and run this. And now we've got foo plus bar plus baz, and that is all one string. So the join is really, really useful. And I know we haven't covered any of the container uh, types in Python yet, but this is a list and it's just a list of strings separated by commas here. That's the syntax for creating a list. And again, the join, we can do something like this. I'm gonna join everything up. And the way to think of this string here, this is our separator. So we create a separator and then we call the dot join method on our separator. And then we pass it the elements that we want to join together. So in here, for example, you know, we don't have to create a separate list. You may want to do something like join, then create a list inside, you know, a 
let's actually do join me together. And rather than use this plus, let's just use something that we haven't used yet. Uh, let's just use an equals for now, just to illustrate this working. There we go, join me together. So this is a separator. We then call the join function, or the, excuse me, we call the join method, and then we provide it with the uh, container of objects that we want to join together. So join, super, super powerful. So let's jump in back into the Python interpreter to finish off the last few that I want to cover. So let's go ahead, let's go crazy, let's make this full screen. So let's go ahead and another one I want to cover is strip. The strip method is also extremely useful. So let's create a new string. I'm going to create a load of space and just put hello followed by a load more space, dot strip. When we return that, we can see we've got a string here with everything either side stripped out. So this is really useful, especially if you've got some kind of data coming in, maybe from a form or from some kind of user input, and you wanna strip away any white space or uh, space around the string, you can use the dot strip. So extremely useful. You may have another case where you've got a string with something like, you know, new line, hello, followed by another new line. You can then call dot strip, and then you can pass it the characters that you want to strip. So we want to strip any new line characters. Go ahead and hit return. We get hello with the new line character stripped away. So strip, again, extremely useful. Um, another thing we could do is the uh, L strip and R strip method. So let's create a new string here. Uh, let's throw some, let's throw something like x x x x hello dot uh, L strip, and then the characters I'm going to give that are x x x x, and you can see it stripped the characters that we've given it from the left hand side of the string. So L strip will strip the left, R strip will strip anything from the right. And if you provide, you can provide it some characters to strip and it will go ahead, it will look at the string, it will find these characters and then it will strip them out. So super, super useful. So one that I kind of rediscovered recently is the partition. And I'd completely forgot about it. Super, super cool method to call on string. So, Create a new string, ABC. We'll call the partition method, and I'm gonna give it the B character. And let's run it and take a look at the result. What it's done is it's returned a three-part tuple. And don't worry about what a tuple is if you don't know, it's just another data type in Python, a container type for storing uh, data. And what it's done is it's partitioned this um, string based on the character that we provide it. So let's do something else. Let's do something like um, foo bar baz dot partition bar. I'm going to give it the middle, the middle part of this string here, and it returns a three-part container containing the uh, first portion of the string followed by the portion of the string that you've told it to partition and then the last part of the string. So really, really cool. So let's do one more example. Um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G dot partition and let's partition this on F. Let's see the result. So depending on what character you tell it to partition against, it's going to give you a different result. So in this case, we've told it to partition on the F character. So the first part of the tuple is going to be anything before the partition character. The second part or the second index of the tuple is going to be whatever you tell it to partition on. And then the third part is going to be anything after the partition. So 
really cool. I'd never seen this before, or I'd just completely forgotten about it, and I think it's really cool. Another extremely useful method is the split. So let's go ahead and create a new string here called one, two, one, two, three, and then we'll call dot split, just empty. And we can see it returns us a list with our string split into different parts. And by default, if you call split without any argument, it's gonna split the string on empty spaces. So that's why we've got this list here of one, two, and three, because we've called the dot split method and it's split our string on the white space. But for example, you may have a string that looks like, you know, A plus B plus C, then you can call dot split and you can pass it the uh, character that you want to split the string on, like a plus, and then you can see here it's split our string on this character and it's returned us a list here nicely formatted split on the character that we've given it let's do one more one more um, let's do title so hello world just a string dot title you can see here it's given us a title case string so it's not all caps anymore it's nicely formatted as title case the title case is just every word is capitalized. So that is going to wrap things up for some of the useful functions and the useful methods that you can call on strings. Now I'll throw a link in the description where you can see and read more about the string methods over at the Python documentation. So that wraps it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Also, feel free to subscribe. Plenty more videos coming in this series soon. As And, and as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.